What is going on, guys? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to our content, we create content like what you're watching slash listening to right now, simply to educate and engage individuals like yourself on mental health awareness and suicide prevention through pop culture. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I am a writer and podcaster here with the company, and I am joined by Emily Bennett and Justin Brooks. These guys are writers, directors, and Emily is also the lead actress in the brand new psychological thriller, Alone With You, which you guys can check out in theaters February 4th and video on demand, digital and DVD beginning February 8th from Dark Star Pictures. Quite a mouthful. How are you guys doing today? Good. That's a great intro. Well, Thank you. Well it's done, so good. Man. So I, I, the first question I have to ask is like, did this movie, is this project uh born out of the quarantine era that we're currently still experiencing yes this film uh, was entirely conceived written and shot and edited um we we had not thought about this film prior to uh the pandemic honestly we like most people did not know what to do with ourselves once the pandemic hit uh we we were in new york city um, we were depressed, we were together, we were anxious, we watched a lot of reality TV, and then we realized we really wanted to make something and make that time uh, meaningful. And so we we wanted to take the anxieties and the fears that we had uh, collectively and not write a film about COVID necessarily, but a film about identity and isolation and what it felt like to be away from those that we loved. Um, and so we uh, outlined Alone With You in May, wrote it in June and started shooting July 1st and uh, wrapped production shooting uh, in August. And and yeah, so mm-hmm. this is an entirely 2020 born film. Yeah. It's really, it's been really interesting to, to kind of see the growth of that subgenre with movies like Alone With You and Host and these yeah. really simplistic films that are preying not only on just day-to-day things, but like, that you're having to kind of really carry this entire film. And one of the things that I think is really impressive about this film is Emily's your performance uh, with just being able to still keep the audience drawn to the edge of their seat. Um, can you guys, can you talk about kind of some of the uh, challenges of being a triple threat with a lot of this film? That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, honestly, it, me playing Charlie, it was it was less of a, a game of telephone to get the performance that we as co-directors needed. Um, we we wrote Charlie together. We developed her together. We would audition dialogue together, um, put it you know in my mouth immediately and be like, oh, that doesn't work. So once I started playing Charlie, as much as you see on screen, the visual language is so emotional and so subjective. The camera is Charlie as well. And so, yes, I poured my heart and soul into Charlie, my hopes and fears and my um, honestly catharsis into her. And I, I laid it out all on screen because that's how I was feeling. But that's how Justin was feeling, too. I think I, I can't overstate the importance of the visual language to truly help support that performance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Charlie was definitely the cup that we filled full of our own traumas and insecurities throughout the pandemic. I I think one of the unique, it was important for us to not make a pandemic movie in the way that um, we didn't want to tell the story that was outside our front door. We didn't want to give time to the actual horrors that we're having in the world, but rather what we felt was interesting is something that we've always kind of talked about together in our storytelling, but really kind of the loss of oneself, the, the, when you're torn away from all your identifiers, the things you do, the people you spend time with, the places you go, you're really kind of locked away with yourself to, to understand who you are outside of all that stuff. And that's fucking terrifying for a lot of, a lot of us. And I I think uh, Charlie was just that, that place where we put that, I, I mean, we talk a lot about this film largely was, was our work. It was our, our art, but this was also our, our pandemic therapy as we were going through it. Mm. 
I was actually going to ask about that next. It seems like this this project seems very cathartic for a lot of you. Um, and uh, so I guess like it, it's interesting, too, because like while this feels like very uh, modernly because, you know, we're still going through all the COVID fears and anxieties and still kind of like trying to like inch back into like life before the the pandemic is it's really interesting to uh also explore a lot of like the timeless themes that this movie goes through um whether it is being in a abusive relationship or um as your character kind of charlie goes through a lot of you know this like denial where like she has this like picture perfect aspect of her partner that like she wants to to carry with her and uh (laughs) Can you guys talk about the the writing process of kind of like mapping out uh, not only Charlie's insecurities uh, in the throughout the the duration of this film, but also at the central relationship between her and her partner? Yeah, I, I mean um, Charlie is <clears throat> Charlie was such a wonderful character for both of us because we both, as we continued writing together, we would discover really deeply who this person was. And and, uh, the film actually started from a short story, um, a a short film that I had written uh, like a year prior. And um, that that purely we took the idea, I guess the setup Mm -hmm. from that. And and everything else in this film is different, even down to the sex of our main character. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was important for us to really, I mean, honestly, just take our character apart, like really bear her um, entirely in this film. And, and, and again, like we said, kind of pour our own um, terrors into that character. And I think isolation obviously being a big theme in this, both isolation physically and, and, and being kept away, but also kind of the way we isolate ourselves, the way we shut ourselves off from, from others, but even going deeper into um, the relationship between her and her mother and, and kind of the microaggressions that are heard there, furthering that isolation, that separation that she feels from, from you know, the world around her. Yeah, and we, we also wanted to explore the idea of self-deception and what do we keep even from ourselves? Yeah. Uh, what are the lies that we tell ourselves to stay mm-hmm. comfortable, even if that might be in a very dangerous situation? Um, we honestly, everything that we felt, everything that COVID separated us from, we took all of that loneliness and the missing of the people that we love the most we poured that into a horror film and that truly that is the horror that we were experiencing and that's that's the more universal horror that we wanted to share yeah one of the things too you you uh justin you had brought in this uh previously is that like this film has a very distinct look to it so like it, it feels like a pretty standard film when you're like looking throughout the first act but once you kind of realize i think it's the point where like charlie can't actually get out of the apartment, the 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 color palette for it kind of starts to change just ever so slightly. And as you kind of reach the final uh, act slash climax of this movie, like it's it's the palette seems to grow darker and darker and darker. Um, what was some of the technical uh, difficulties of of kind of achieving that look for uh, the certain stages of her? uh kind of psychosis throughout the course of this yeah movie. i i'm i'm so thank you so much for noticing i, yeah, I mean that you. was very important to us um me as a cinematographer it's important that i that that my job behind the camera is to tell the same story that's on the script and um uh for us as directors we are drawn to telling stories very visually along with uh, through our characters and through our script. And we talked a long time about um, what's the visual language of this film and and where do we start, where do we end up? They had to be very two uh, different distinct voices um, and there had to be an evolution. Uh, As there is an evolution of character, there is an evolution of the space. There had to be an evolution of of the the visuals and the color and, and the light. So, you know, it obviously, uh, the camera is very tied to our main character uh, for good reason. And so we wanted to basically see the world through her eyes. 
And that, that world at the beginning is very hopeful, very lovely, very light and colorful world. That's, um, that's something she was, I mean, she's going into the anniversary with her, uh, her, her love and, and everything is very warm and wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that slowly gets chipped away. And, and we had to make sure we took that away visually at the same time. And I think one of the biggest, um, uh, kind of tools that we use to be able to do that effectively is we knew we should film as much in chronological order as possible just to make sure we since we are entire crew entire cast like we're we we're the only two people on set we need to keep ourselves as as organized as possible so we worked through the film chronologically as much as we could to make sure that we always were able to map that evolution, both in character, but also visually and in the uh, the the set design as well. I gotta imagine that's gotta be a little bit of a challenge uh, if you guys shot this in traditional, uh, you know, filmmaking status where you're shooting things out of order. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We we had to shoot a few things out of order, yeah. um, which obviously requires something of the actor to know a bit of. You know, the I, I literally, as an actor, um, <clears throat> in most of my projects, take a piece of graph paper and map out the emotional journey of of the character. Honestly, just so you know, if I'm if I don't have the luxury of working with Justin and myself on our projects, then if the director's like, actually, we're going to go to page fifty five today and we're going to do scene blah blah blah, then I have to know exactly where I need to fit in. So, luckily, we were able to control the. The, the shooting, but every now and then, you know, the beach, we had to take the beach when we could, yeah. um, when we were outside, you know, with that beautiful view of, of Manhattan, which honestly feels a bit reminiscent of 28 days later, you know, when, when a massive city seems completely empty, yeah. we had to take those opportunities when we could get them. Yeah. So. And one of the things that we, you know, this film deals with isolation so much, and you talked about uh, this kind of being birthed out of your own mental health journey with uh, dealing with COVID, dealing with the pandemic, and, you know, how much of what we're seeing with Car Charlie's journey also is reflective of kind of like your own fears outside of, you know, the, the pandemic and the, the isolation of, of, of being locked in or of, you know, being kind of, you know, bullied or, or not heard or not validated um, because they're with the the woman or the voice in the great, you know, you have that, you have that wonderful scene between yourself and uh, Barbara Crampton. And then also at the same time, you have a, like we've already mentioned, like a very abusive relationship, uh, one-sided relationship here at, at the center. So like mm -hmm. how much of what we see Charlie go through, how much of that is kind of like, a little bit of you know autobiographical for you guys as writers. Oh, I mean, so more more than we want. More than so honestly, feel this, terribly comfortable with. Yeah. yeah, I mean, without getting too specific, yeah, it's Charlie is both of us. Charlie is unfortunately, you know, we we're lucky to we're partners in life. So, but we've been through some some shit, both of us. Yeah, like I said, um, I mean, Charlie's the cup and we had plenty of blood to pour in there. That's for sure. I, yeah. I, um, I, I think we, we both have experienced relationships that were terribly damaging to both of us, which is why, honestly, personally, we were so excited to find each other and we're actually engaged as well as, you know, being filmmakers. So, uh, but we, you know, it's so wonderful to find a partner that you can trust and, and truly Charlie is the amalgamation of years of, of hurt and working through anxieties and depressions and different relationships that were really quite traumatizing to us. But this film is valuable because it gave us it, it gave us a, a way to put those those past traumas to use. Charlie let us find a catharsis within ourselves. And honestly, in the pandemic, when we were so isolated, thankfully we were together, um, we just put it all on screen. Honestly, there, there are some scenes in here where um, I'm not acting. Near the end of the film, we, you know, we shot chronologically and near the end, we were both losing it. But thankfully, we had yeah. each other. And, you know, having that support system is so important, both on set and just personally. So yeah, Charlie means a lot to us. It, it's interesting that we, 
I mean, I, I say we we did this to kind of deal with quarantine in a way, um, but it, <clears throat> I mean, we of course inevitably made it harder on us because not only are we dealing with the world outside, but but uh, we're putting ourselves through th through just one of the hardest uh, times we've ever had uh, while making this film. This film was incredibly difficult to work through. Um, as much as it is a catharsis, it was also uh, it, it was dizzying and it, it was maddening. And, and you can see that on screen. There's a great many times that Emily had to really kind of bite her lip and say, I'm going to use today and yeah. I'm going to put it on screen because it, it was difficult. I mean, we lived in our set. Uh, our separation of work life balance was not healthy. Um, I had blacked out all our windows for use of of the film. So we were living like vampires. It, it, it was mm. It was strange and it was rough, but it, I mean, I hate to say that it's, it's, it's kind of, I hate to say it, but I mean, out of, out of that hurt and out of that anxiety and out of that terror, I mean, great art is, is pulled, you know, that's when we truly become really creative when we we're, I guess, just open nerves. And, and this is that film for us, for sure. I mean, it was it was hard. Um, it was beautiful. It's it's we're so proud, but it, it's also when we watch it. I mean, that is a, a very difficult time uh, on that screen for sure. And it's very vulnerable to share with people because there is so much of us in this film. Yeah. Again, we were the only crew in this film. We made this together, so it's uh, it means a lot that it that you responded to it in the way you did. Yeah. So uh, this is my last question that I have for you guys, because uh, I'm being told I when my time's running out. Is uh, this film uh, obviously is uh, as we talked about is very visually um, investing for the viewer, and I'm wondering if you guys can kind of talk about the significance of the ocean because that is kind of a large portion of the the third act. Yeah, I mean, I we this this movie is very much a film about balance. Um, the characters in it oftentimes balance one another. They're they're always kind of the 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 devil and the angel on the shoulder. But also, when we're telling a story that's so confined and so locked in, I mean, uh, Charlie as a character is literally locked in this space. We also wanted to give her that space. We wanted to. It was important even in shooting the ocean that it, it be an ocean that you can, that looks endless, that, mm -hmm. that goes on forever. We needed her to have that space because honestly, we needed to take that away even there. We cannot leave a safe space for our character. That's that's not where horror is, is pulled from. We needed to give her something that seemed comfort, comfortable, that seemed reminiscent, that seemed safe for her. And we need to even take that away from her and mm -hmm. show her why that's terrifying. And, and, and that's uh, that's really why we needed this, this space of the ocean, for sure. Yeah, there's something eternal about that opening shot that we, you know, we, we both decided on and then Justin captured so beautifully. The sky meets the water. There is no separation even with the mist over the water. It there's endless possibility out there and endless possibility within this relationship. And the ocean slowly becomes a, a prison unto itself. Those memories, those nice, beautiful memories turn on Charlie. And, um, you know, film is about a journey and starting in one place and ending at a completely different place. And hopefully as a viewer, that can give the audience some kind of catharsis and insight possibly into their own lives. But we had to focus on Charlie and what was the best journey that we could put her through uh, to serve the audience. I thank you guys so much for you guys this time. As I've mentioned before, along with you, hitting theaters February 4th on DVD, video on demand, and digital beginning February 8th from Dark Star Pictures. Justin, Emily, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much for having us. All right. Have a good day, guys. Take you care. too.